Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 3 December 2015. And I bet you if you take a close look at the six knives on the bench in front of the camera, you can guess what the topic of this video is going to be. Especially if you're watching it close to its production date. Uh, I think two days ago or so, around the 1st of December, a cold steel proof test video was posted on YouTube and I love these videos um, and this is this series has been going on for several months now they take a triad lock folder made by cold steel and they do a spine whack test and a weight hang test to test lock strength and they do head to heads between a given cold steel model and another knife and, uh, Two days ago or so, it was Cold Steel Code 4 against Chris Reeves Sabenza, which is, frankly is a test maybe none of us ever expected to see. And the Sabenza failed the spine whack test and it failed at 45 pounds of dead weight hung from the handle. And my the reason I'm making this video <laughs> is because I guess I'm known to be a bit of a fanboy for both Cold Steel and Chris Reeve knives and I have a video that has thousands of views and it calls the Sabenza the best folding production knife period uh, does the cold steel weight hang and spine whack test video make me want to pull that video down no uh, so the reason I'm making this video is because my every form of email messaging I have uh, in the last 24 hours has been blown up with people asking me about this video so let's kind of take a look at why the Sabenza might have failed that test why the triad lock knives are so successful at it and what it means okay so first of all Let's get some knives out of the way so we don't mess with our focus. We will take a look here at the Plain Jane Large 21, my first ever Sabenza, and we will talk about a little knife history. The Sabenza and the, wow, look at all the tape goo on that blade. That's just atrocious because, I mean, we can't have that because. All my trolls know that I don't ever use my knives. So I can't let them down by showing evidence on camera that I've actually cut something with one of my knives, especially one of my Sabenzas. And I still have all my digits. So I did in fact use the knife and it didn't fold on me. But now we've gotten rid of the evidence, so no one will ever know. Go back to your normal modus operandi, O oh troll nation. Okay, so in 1987, the Reeve Integral Lock was born out of the brain of a self-taught engineer of, of sorts, Chris Reeve from South Africa. And his objective was to improve on the Michael Walker liner lock which had the liner of the knife cut away and bent in springing fashion to interface with the tang of the blade and stop it from folding. Well the problem with most liner locks is that by their design they had to be sort of thin and flimsy and because they're sort of on their own in locking up the knife thin and flimsy didn't make for strong so Mr. Reeve set out to improve that design and he did it in a pretty ingenious way instead of having a thin flimsy liner cut away interfacing with the blade tang he uses the whole thickness of a titanium frame slab to do that which gives us more strength and possibly most significantly of all not only does the 
reeve integral lock or frame lock depend on the spring tension of the lock bar to keep the blade locked. It also uses the pressure of the hand, which is theoretically closing on the handle and serving as a secondary locking force, which isn't happening on a liner lock because a scale would be in your way. In fact, a lot of liner locks, uh, when, the, when the knife torques in the hand, your finger can actually catch that flimsy, thin locking leaf and help disengage the knife, whereas on the frame lock, the hand is an integral part of the Reeve integral lock mechanism. Okay? Now, let's talk about some geometry, shall we? Uh, hold on just a minute, guys. Let me go get some paper and a pen, and I'll be right back. Okay, paper and pen. And the reason for this is to kind of give you an insight into why those two things, spring tension and the human hand, are important in the integrity of a frame lock. So here's our blade tang. And it is going to be ground. I'm going to exaggerate this angle. But it's going to be ground at an angle to interface with a lock bar like this. So if the knife is trying to close, force is being applied in that direction. And assuming there's no force holding these two pieces of metal together, if this one pushes this way, what's going to happen to this one? Well, you guessed it. Because of this angle, it's going to want to exit. So there are actually three things making this joint secure. Uh, spring tension, the human hand, and friction. Forgot to mention friction. And you guys who own titanium frame locks know it is quite a delicate balance and an interesting dance uh, friction and titanium frame locks. Uh, too much friction gives us galling and stick. Too little friction um, gives us lock rock and lock slip. Well, the cold steel uh, spine whack and weight hang tests showed us lock slip more than anything. Um, why? Well, because the test wasn't designed to show the design of the frame lock. Uh, there was no human hand, uh, an integral part of keeping a frame lock locked up. I'll guarantee you when Mr. Reeve designed the Reeve integral lock back in the late 80s, he never thought someone would be uh, spine whacking it with a uh, clay pigeon launcher or hanging, uh, hanging weights from the handle. He did, however, design a lock to be, in his mind, very secure, more than adequately strong for the intended uses of the knife, and one that was fairly impervious to accidental disengagement. So that's what we've got with the Sebenza. Just enough lock stick on most Sebenzas to let you know that it's secure. A really sturdy amount of spring tension and a human hand. Uh, these locks are carburized on the face which reduces the amount of friction between lock bar and blade tang but remember because of the hand we can have some of that. Uh, there's a little bit of stick normally, as I said, and frankly, Sebenzas have been in production for about 25 years. You know, uh, Mr. Reeve marks 1987 as the birth of the Sebenza because I think that's when he drew it. But they've been in production for at least 25 years. And you guys have all read the reams and reams of forum posts, haven't you, about uh, lock failure on Sebenzas and people's fingers being cut off because Sebenza blades have folded on them. What? What, what, what did you say? Oh, you've never re read anything like that. Neither have I. 
nor have I had any of my Sabenzas do anything that resembles failure. So, let's talk about the triad lock. The triad lock uses improved lockback technology. So instead of lock bar meeting the back of the blade tang with a very shallow tooth engaging the blade tang, the triad lock uses a big long tooth. Look how much of that lock bar is exposed and you can't see the bottom of the tooth. A big long tooth that goes into a really big deep cavity with lots of spring tension and the forces in any kind of negative pressure or impact are borne by this stop pin and distributed throughout the frame, thus minimizing any effect of resonance on any of the steel components and virtually eliminating lock failure by either negative pressure or negative impact on the spine of the blade. Well, what does the triad lock test uh, involve that Mr. Demko does? Well, it involves negative pressure and negative impact. His, his knife lock is specifically designed to be the strongest locking mechanism for a folding knife on the planet for those two conditions. Okay, this knife, this lock, this knife, this lock were specifically designed to perform better than any other locking mechanism in the test Andrew Demko uses for his head-to-heads. The other locking mechanisms, whether it be the liner lock, the frame lock, the axis lock, uh, what's the lock on the paramilitary two? Brain fart, brain fart, brain fart, compression lock. None of those locks were specifically designed to pass that test. They were designed to very effectively hold a knife open in a locked position while being used for cutting tasks. That's all I'm going to say about that. So if you, uh, if you email me or message me on Facebook Messenger or text me or put a comment on my Instagram page or my YouTube channel asking me what I think about the Savenza test against the Cold Steel Code 4. I'm not going to answer you. As I said, I love them both. I commend Cold Steel and Andrew Demko for designing a super strong lock and a family of knives that can be absolutely thrashed well beyond their intended purpose and hold up doing it. I love them. Um, <clears throat> that is the strong suit of a cold steel axis lock knife. You know, it's kind of ironic, I think, because both uh, knife companies, Cold Steel and Chris Reeve, have been, uh, have been accused of overkill in their design. Uh, I just recently listened to a sort of a famous rant by Cliff Stamp in which he was talking about how useless the, the tight tolerances and extreme quality control of Chris Reeve knives is because it reaches a point of diminishing returns. It makes the knife so expensive and, you know, if our tolerance in our pivot is plus or minus a tenth and a half thousandths of an inch, when it could be three thousandths of an inch and have a knife that performs just as reliably and it adds 50% to the cost of a knife, it's stupid to do it. That was his point. Well, okay, I, I can see that. But there are those of us who appreciate the precision and the mechanism of a Sabenza. The cold steel knives weren't designed to have precision. I mean, if you look uh, in the in the mechanisms of the knives, there's big old burrs and miscuts that get passed. And 
Um, they're not precisely constructed. They are sturdily constructed. And some might say there's no reason that I need to, I need to strap an Ultimate Hunter into a text fixture and hang 600 pounds from the back of the handle. It has nothing to do with how it performs as a folding hunting knife. Well, true, it doesn't. But there are those of us who appreciate the fact that my triad lock cold steel can have 600 pounds hung from the back of the handle and the lock's not going to fail. Uh, they both appeal to me even. You know, some people prefer one and not the other. I like, I like knives. And I like knives that do what they do better than everybody else. And uh, we have sort of two ends of the spectrum on excellence here between Cold Steel and Chris Reeve. And by the way, they don't compete with each other. Um, this uh, $30 medium Voyager is dimensionally very similar to a small Sebenza. It costs $400. Do they compete with each other? No. I own both. And one of them's not kicking the other one out of the closet. So, did the video from Mr. Demko and Cold Steel uh, change my opinion of either the Cold Steel Triad Lock or the Reeve Integral Lock? Or the Sebenza? No. I think it was a very predictable result to a test designed to showcase the strength of the Triad Lock. And I think if Andrew Demko were sitting here with me as we were making this review, we would be nodding our heads in agreement with each other because I think it was pretty apparent, even watching the Sabenza fail at a rather unexpectedly low threshold, um, that he was almost a little bit embarrassed by the result and knew that it wasn't an accurate reflection on the overall quality of the Sabenza. So that is all for this one, my friends. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word and all the knives on this bench are sharp.